everyone. Thank you for jo joining us for the Camp Info Night. We're just going to give everyone a couple, maybe a minute more to log on. Um, but thank you for being here. We're excited. I'm going to try to answer a couple of questions here. All right, is everyone ready to get started? I'll take that as a yes. Well, hello, welcome to our 2022 Summer Camp Info Night. Um, it is so nice to think about summer on this snowy February cold day. So uh, let's forget about the snow outside for a little bit. Let's forget about the couple more inches to come and let's just think about summer, think about fun. Uh, tonight's meeting will be recorded. So if you have to leave early or if you would like to review any information, you'll be able to find the recording on the Park District website, www.prparks.org. My name is Julie Grieve. I am the program manager with the district and I would like to begin tonight's meeting by introducing my amazing team who are here tonight. Uh, first is Amy Kopecki, our Youth and Special Events Supervisor. Uh, Robin Battaglia, is she on? I know she's having some computer issues, um, but Robin Battaglia is our Youth Coordinator. She'll be joining us. Oh, she's here. Uh, Jen Clausen, our Wildwood Nature Center Supervisor. Jim Dehu, our Athletic Supervisor. Liz Gilroy, our Teen and Cultural Arts Supervisor. Debbie Myshock, Customer Service Manager. Molly Jacobson, Preschool and Early Childhood Supervisor. Um, I cannot tell you enough how awesome this group of individuals is. I can't tell you how hard they work and how dedicated they are. Um, so if you ever see them, um, please thank them. They are amazing. All right, let's get going with the slides. So an uh, overview of the evening. Tonight, we're going to review some general camp information with you before going into various summer camp options. We will be offering uh, the summer, and at the end, Debbie will take us through the steps on how to register. Please use the question feature to ask any questions. We will try and answer the questions throughout the presentation or at the end. If we do not get to your questions tonight, we will follow up with you in an email. I would also like to point out that after you register, you will receive an email regarding specific camp information the week of May 23rd. And we'll be hosting a camp open house on June 2nd from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. This open house will go into camp specific information, question and answers, and a chance to meet staff one-on-one. -on -one. We'll talk about how we handle swimming, medication, drop off and pick up, very specific information for the camps. Tonight is just an overview of what we will be offering. Um, I don't know if you're aware, there's this thing called COVID-19 happening right now. And so due to this, um, there are many different organizations that are providing guidelines and orders to help ensure our camps are run as safe as possible. These organizations are listed here on the screen. And along with these organizations, our camp program is proud to be certified through the American Camp Association, or known to many as ACA. Uh, this is a rigorous process that has many standards, a book probably you know, three inches of everything that we have to um, maintain our accreditation. So we're very proud to have that accreditation. 
So thinking about today being Groundhog's Day, uh, where Bruce Willis's character continues to repeat the same day over and over and over, um, I'm hoping that this is our last Groundhog Day, as I don't know about you, but I am ready for COVID to end. Um, summer camps is one of our busiest but most rewarding seasons. It is a time where we can provide children the opportunity to be outdoors, where they can have fun, meet new friends, learn new games, and just be able to relax and enjoy summer with their friends. With COVID, children will continue to do all the things they love, but within current guidelines. Uh, please note that our camp guidelines for 2022 have not been released yet, um, but we have been watching this closely. I attended a meeting today with the CDC and ACA, uh, just trying to anticipate what some of the changes might be. Um, you know, right now guidelines include social distancing, face covering, things like that. Um, so with that said, um, our maximums are also set to last year's standards. So that's based on the three foot social distancing for inside spaces. Um, so if there is a camp you want to attend that is full, please, please, please sign up for a wait list in case these guidelines change. Um, last year, we didn't receive the guidelines till about a week, maybe a week and a half before the start of camp. So we are really watching this, um, trying to get a feel for what's going to be happening. Um, I've mentioned the American Camp Association and the standards earlier, and I just wanted to point out a few of them um, tonight, um, including the staff to camper ratios that are listed on the slide, and to note that 80% of our camp staff will be 18 years of age and older. We will ask you to confirm daily that your child has no COVID symptoms and has not been in contact with anyone COVID, anyone who has tested positive for COVID. And at this time, um, you know, I haven't heard anything about mandatory vaccinations. I'm not anticipating this, but again, this is something um, that, um, you know, they talked about today and they're not anticipating that for us, but I did um, want to address um, that tonight. Uh, tonight, we're not gonna go into the camp specifics. That's for our camp open house in June. But I did want to give you a quick overview of some items you will need to send with your child to camp every day. Uh, we ask you to send a peanut and tree nut free snack and lunch, uh, preferably in a reusable container, a reusable water bottle. We do have refillable water stations, face coverings. I do recommend that you send an extra one in case one gets wet or dirty. Sunscreen, uh, please apply sunscreen to your, camp, your child prior to the start of the camp day. And then after lunch and before going to the pool, we can remind your child to reapply the sunscreen. Or if you initial the waiver in our EPACT um, emergency forms, we will use our, our the Park District spray sunscreen to reapply sunscreen to your child. Swimsuit and towel, even if your camper doesn't go to the pool, they will enjoy water play. Gym shoes, closed toe shoes, campers do a lot of running a lot of playing and we want to keep them safe and keep their little toes safe as well. And um, early childhood, I would also, mar uh, Molly might rec uh, mention it, but an extra set of clothes for the younger age group. A couple more uh, COVID related items. Um, so if a child exhibits any symptoms of COVID, uh, please don't send them to camp. I know everyone is busy and everyone has to work, but please, if they have symptoms, don't send them to camp. Um, if they are at camp and they develop symptoms, we will move them away from the group and a counselor will stay with them until you arrive. If this occurs, we do ask that you pick up your child within 30 minutes. If you cannot pick up your child, please arrange for a family member or an emergency contact person to pick up your child as quickly as possible. Um, if there happens to be instances of COVID in the camp, we will notify families if there's a positive case in camp, if a child has been exposed to a confirmed case of COVID um, or exposed to a possible case of COVID. Vaccinations will play a role in who will need to quarantine. Um, again, those details um, are not available right now, but we will cover that at our camp open house. And now I would like to turn the presentation over to Molly Jacobson, who will review her early childhood camp offerings with you. Hello. 
Uh, good evening. My name is Molly Jacobson. Uh, some, of you, some of you may know me. I am the um, supervisor for the early childhood and preschool programs. And over the summer, I program all of our early childhood camps for ages two to five. Um, so our early childhood camps are held at Main Park in the preschool wing. We use our classrooms that we use for preschool. We use all of our supplies to offer a fun and keep your kids busy during the summer for all of the little ones. Um, each week we come up with a new theme and then we plan our crafts, our games and our activities around that theme to make each week kind of fun and exciting and new so that the kids um, you know, keep having fun all summer long. Some weeks we even bring entertainment in if it goes along with our theme. Um, these little guys don't go on field trips, so we like to say we bring field trips to them. So um, that will be told to everybody weekly through a uh, newsletter that the camp staff um, share with all of the families. So everybody knows what's going on a week beforehand so they can plan appropriately. We have two gated playgrounds that we use for our early childhood camps. Um, our larger playground, you may be familiar with it, is right um, behind Main Park got a nice playground on it and a big shade tree. Um, we use this one as our play area and it's a nice one that we can stagger uh, the camps going out there if we want to lessen the exposure. Um, you know, like everybody else, I don't know what the summer is going to look like, but based on um, last year, we liked to do that staggering um, just to keep the exposure down for the little ones. Our two-year-old playground located on the other side of Main Park is what we use for our water play areas. We set up sprinklers, water tables, and other non-submersible submersible water play um, for the kids to enjoy. We do have more than one classroom for our camps, so we break up the camps according to age. Um, I'm gonna go over the specific camps, but within those camps, sometimes we do separate them into two separate rooms because we're trying to lessen the exposure. Oftentimes those camps don't play with one another. Um, we kind of cohort and keep everybody together in their own little room. But um, if you do want to make a friend request, I can't guarantee that we can honor all of them, but we do take those and we do try to honor them as best that we can. But again, I can't make any promises because we don't know what the numbers are going to look like. Um, this year we are doing a Tuesday, Thursday and a Monday, Wednesday, Friday option. So if you wanted to attend five days a week, um, you just have to sign up for the two different camps, but we will not be doing the same activities on those days. So if you do sign up for five days a week, your kids are always going to have something fresh and exciting to do and not redo something. Maybe, you know, if they come on Tuesday and Wednesday, they're not going to be coming um, on a day where they're repeating any activities. Um, the only exception for that would be our entertainment. If they came in, um, they might just get a double dose of entertainment, which is not a bad thing if you ask me. Um, a reminder that kids need to be age appropriate by September 1st. So they, um, it's uh, the kids that they're going to go to school with next year. So if they're going off to kindergarten, they're going to be with the kids that are all going off to kindergarten. So hopefully they'll be able to make some friends with children, maybe meet some new kids that maybe they haven't met before. And then when they go to school next year, maybe they'll have a couple of friends um, already made. So I'm going to go through our three different camps that we have for this age group. The first one is Sunshine Camp. This is for our youngest kids, age two. So they need to be two years old by September 1st. Um, they need to be fully potty trained. We do not have the capability to change diapers. Um, we understand that some kids are working on this um, at this age, but um, we do ask that, you know, you 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 know if they're potty trained so <laughs> and we know if they're potty trained so they're going to have to be able to self toilet themselves change their clothes if necessary so we're just not um set up to be able to to take care of those um needs for your children so everybody has to be 100 percent potty trained um these children will molly be molly yes. sorry um so does that mean that they are not able to wear a pull-up no they will not be able to wear a pull-up sorry they do, do need to be 100% potty trained, especially during COVID. Um, water play will be two times a week, water permitting or weather permitting, sorry. So if you do sign up for five days a week, you'll at least try to go in there on the Tuesday, Thursday option, as well as the Monday, Wednesday, Friday options in the morning. Children will need to bring a snack and a water bottle for Sunshine Camp. Camp Curiosity is from 9 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Sunshine Camp is from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Um, for those little guys. 
Camp Curiosity is for our preschool age kids through ages three and four. Those uh, campers come from 9 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. They will need a snack as well as a lunch and a water bottle. Water play will again be at least two times a week. If the weather is permitting, we may add another day in there. We did last year, um, but the campers always let their families know, the camp counselors always let their families know ahead of time. Again, all children need to be 100% potty trained. Um, these children cannot participate in before care, but they can participate in hot lunch. So if you wanted to purchase a hot lunch for this age group, that is, a, that is appropriate and fine. Um, our kickoff to kindergarten camp is for all of our kids that are moving out of preschool and heading to kindergarten next year. It's a full day camp. Age, um, uh, the times are 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. They will need to bring two snacks because we like to give them a snack in the morning and then one again in the afternoon. Um, they too need to have a lunch and they can get a hot lunch if possible or if, if you wanted to and a water bottle as well. Water play for this age group is every afternoon weather permitting. So these kids go out they have a really fun action-packed camp in the morning and then in the afternoon um, everybody all the other campers have left camp curiosity and sunshine so they have um, the option to go out every single day so that's a really nice option for this age group um, these children can participate in before and after care and like i mentioned they can have hot lunch i am going to molly before yep. you go on there's a few questions about these camps on water days, do the parents send the kids in their swimsuit and do they need to be able to change themselves? They do. They should send them in their swimsuit. It's just, it's, it's easier for the kids. And depending on what time they go out, sometimes if they go out later and it's a nice day, we might just have pickup at, at, in the outside um, area, but they don't need to necessarily change their own clothes. So this is a, a life skill. It's a, a, a milestone development that kids are still working on. We understand that. Um, we do bring them in and um, put them with campers and the, and the campers will help them change their clothes. Okay, and then with the early childhood camps, um, do you require masks worn outdoors and just taken off then when they have the sprinkler, the water play? Um, I think I'm going to speak on behalf of all the camps when we say we'll do whatever the CDC and IDPH recommend. At this time, we would say yes. Yeah. Our kids go outside with can with masks on. Any other questions? No, I think we're good right now. Okay. Well, thank you. I'm going to turn it over to Jenny Clausen. And thanks. Thank you, Molly. I'm Jenny, I'm the Wildwood Nature Center Supervisor and uh, the Wild, Wildwood also offers um, three early childhood camps for the summer. We have Camp Mini Marshmallow, Wild Childs and Happy Hikers. We have outdoor spaces for all of our camps. We spend the majority of our time outdoors. So Camp Mini Marshmallow and Wild Childs are outdoors at the Outdoor Nature Classroom and outside at Wildwood and then Happy Hikers explores around Wildwood and Main Park. Each class also has a designated indoor space um, for Camp Mini Marshmallow and Wild Child, they use the nature preschool classrooms at Main Park, and Happy Hikers also has an indoor space as well in case the weather turns bad. All three um, camps explore nature, science, and animal themes, and they do that through free play, uh, crafts, projects, experiments, circle time, story time, games, and of course, hiking around the grounds and experimenting and playing um, with everything that we have here. We also do specific water play days, so usually it'll um, correlate with a the theme, so it might not be every week or it might not be every day. And then for the specific camps, Camp Mini Marshmallow runs towards the end of the summer, so the um, later in the summer, the four weeks of the end of July and August. It's a morning camp, it's a half day camp, so it runs from 9 a.m. to 11.30, and we offer a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or a Tuesday, Thursday option. And then um, Camp Mini Marshmallow also has two classrooms. So there's the Hickory Room and the Walnut Room, and you can sign up um, as a class. So there's the Hickory group that you can sign up as or the Walnut group, and they would be separate classes. So if you wanna sign up for your friends, then you can make sure to check out which group they're gonna sign up for. Wild Child is very similar to Camp Mini Marshmallow, but it is our afternoon cramp. So that runs from 12.30 to three. And then Happy Hikers is a weekly class. So it runs just on Mondays, just on Wednesdays, or just on Fridays. So you can sign up for and attend only on Mondays, or you could pick and choose um, between two or three of those days. And it runs for six weeks, starting at the beginning of camp and going through mid-July. 
And all three um, programs are mixed age groups. So meaning that if you sign a four-year-old and a six-year-old up for wild child, they would be in the same group together. So um, all the camps are mixed age. Um, we don't um, split them off based on age. So they're all together. Um, and then for these camps, it would be the age they are as the start date of the class. So if the class is starting um, June 22nd, they would need to be three to five for Camp Mini Marshmallow by June 22nd. And that is the Early Child and Nature Camps. And next we have Raman, if there's not any questions. Hi, I'm Robin. I wanted to tell you a little bit about a couple of our uh, five to nine year old camps. Uh, we have Camp Want a Lot of Fun, which is a full day camp from nine till three. Um, it's either Monday through Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Thursday and Friday. Uh, it's also complementary to our um, after program, aftercare program at Main Park, which is going to be covered a little later. Um, we have weekly themes with the camps, games, activity. Water play is outdoor at Main Park, consisting of sprinklers, water balloons, different activities like that. And next slide. Very similar to that is Kids Quest, also a weekly theme camp. This one's located at South Park. It's Monday through Friday. Um, they go to the pool, weather permitting, um, and you could also do before and after care with that, uh, with, the, with the school, with the van. Um, and it's a weekly themed camp. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Liz now with more camp information. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, I would like to introduce myself. I'm the supervisor of the Teens and Cultural Arts Department. Um, I'm fairly new to the position. I've been here a few months, um, but I'm very excited and I'm really looking forward to a safe and successful and just a really wonderful um, summer season like I'm sure you guys are as well. Uh, camp Rewind is a full day camp and camp is offered for 10 weeks this summer. It's offered for ages six through 11 and we'll separate them out by age groups. Um, so games and activities are age appropriate. Uh, this camp is a five day camp. It's offered Monday through Friday. And the time that this camp runs is from 9 a.m. until 3, 3 p.m. Um, and make sure you bring the everyday camp items that were listed on page four. Those are going to be super important since they're, since they're spending all day with us. Um, in this camp, we do not go on field trips, but we do swim three times a week at the Centennial Aquatic Center. Um, other things that we do throughout the summer is we have our weekly themes and activities, um, which include crafts and games, sports, scavenger hunts. Um, we do try to have our themes match our craft ideas as well to keep that consistent. Um, and another, uh, you know, fun aspect for the campers to do is I encourage you to uh, feel free to dress up um, each week to coincide we with the weekly theme. This is just something fun for the campers to do and um, it makes each week a little bit more exciting. Um, we do offer before care um, at Main Park. Um, and then something new this summer is we are offering aftercare, uh, which is available at um, Centennial Activity Center. And that's just a little um, recap right now about Camp Rewind. And right now I'm going to turn it over to Jenny. Thanks, Liz. Uh, the other school age camps that Wildwood offers are Nature Camp and Discovery Crew Camp. Um, Nature Camp is our full day, full week camp. So full day being from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. And Discovery Crew is sort of the sister camp to Nature Camp. That camp is also full day, so 9 to 3, but it's programmed for children to attend partial week, either coming on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or coming on Tuesday, Thursday. Both Nature Camp and Discovery Crew camps are separated into two different age groups. So we have what we call the Youngers, which are our 6 to 8 year olds, and our Olders are the 9 to 11 year olds. Outdoors Nature Camp and Discovery Crew gather at Wildwood and Main Park, depending on the camp. And they also all have their designated indoor spaces in case of inclement weather. And then during camp, our campers enjoy swimming at Centennial one to three times a week, depending on the camp. 
each week we either go on a field trip or have a special event and special events conclude things like archery animal shows science shows and our color war um, every week we also have campfires do tie-dyeing go fishing and have games like capture the flag and zombie tag and then we also love to go on hikes to the Des Plaines River Trail which is just down the street and then our goal with nature camp is to get the kids outside spending time in nature trying new things experiencing the world around them and then sharing that of course with their friends and both of these camps also um, can utilize before and after care and those are both at Main Park for nature camp and discovery crew and next, I'll turn it over to Jim. Hello, I'm Jim Dehu, with the athletic supervisor for the Park District, and I am in charge of sports camp and camp varsity. All of these camps are full day camps located at Centennial Park. We are an outdoor camp, and we will only use the Centennial Fitness Center in cases of inclement weather. A typical day at sports camp is uh, pretty much playing sports all morning, and then we have a break for lunch and change to go swimming, and then we swim at the Centennial Aquatic Center. Some of the things we do throughout the summer, we'll have themed days, and we do have weekly tournaments and Camp Olympics on certain weeks, so uh, it keeps it really interesting for playing sports. Um, all three of these camps go together on a Friday field trip, and Camp Varsity has an additional field trip on Tuesdays. The before care for this camp is at Main Park, and they will be uh, bussed over uh, to our camp around 9 a.m., but we do have after care located at uh, Centennial Park. And with that, I will pass it back to Liz. Thanks, Jim. Um, we do offer a camp for ages 11 to 14 year olds, and this camp is called Teen Trailblazers. This is a full day camp. Um, in this age group and in this camp, everybody is grouped together for the duration of the summer. Um, we do have three different options that are offered to accommodate those busy summer schedules. We have camp, which is offered our five day option, Monday through Friday, our three day option, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and then our two day option, which is Tuesday and Thursday. And this camp runs from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. This camp is located over at Prospect Park. So they utilize the grounds over there. Um, and that's where their home base is for Teen Trailblazers. They do go swimming at Hinkley Pool um, two to three times a week, which is a fun aspect in this camp as well. Um, there is weekly field trips. Um, we're in the process of securing those um, now, just some fun, uh, awesome trips for the teens to go on and enjoy. They also do have walking field trips to Uptown and just to enjoy that space. Um, while on site, we are playing sports, games, we're um, you know, going on adventures. Um, the goal for this camp is for everyone to be off and to unplug from their phones and from technology and just to enjoy the summer and the outdoor atmosphere while making new friends and experiences. That is the goal for this camp. Um, we do offer before and after care and that's available um, at Main Park this summer. Um, and now I'm going to turn it over to my colleague Jenny. Park District also offers summer school option camps that correlate with the District 64 Worlds of Wonder program. So our summer school option camps run in three week sessions to match the World of Wonder sessions. And then District 64 Worlds of Wonders offers two class sessions a day. So there's two different start times to the summer school option of our camp, depending on which sessions of the Worlds of Wonder classes you sign up for, one or two. So after they finish their day at District 64, they will be transported to their campsite. So the summer school option Camp Rewind children are located at Washington and these campers would join in with the rest of the Camp Rewind children for the themes, the activities, the dress up days and swimming at Centennial. The summer school option nature camp is located at Main Park. So they'd be transported to their Main Park um, campsite. Summer school option nature camp is separate from the rest of the full day nature camp. So they won't see um, other 
people that are in full day camp, it's a completely separate camp and they're split into two separate age groups. Again, the younger is the six to eight year olds and the older is the nine to 11 year olds. And then even though they're separate from the full day nature camp kids, they still get to do the same themes, the same special events, fishing, campfire, and other, other nature-based themes that we're doing. And they still get to go swimming at Centennial. Um, because both um, Summer School Rewind and Summer School Nature Camp are partial day camps um, because they're attending the Worlds of Wonder program in the morning, there are no field trips with these two camps. Both of them offer before and after care. So if they were doing before care, the campers would be at Main Park and then they would be transported to District 64 Worlds of Wonder program before their classes starts. They would attend Worlds of Wonder and then be transported to their camp. And if they're doing aftercare, they would be transported from their campsite to their aftercare site. And then if you're doing before and aftercare for summer school option, just like the other camps, these are additional signups that you would have to do. So you, your summer school gets you from Worlds of Wonder to your campsite, but if you wanna do before or aftercare, those would be additional signups. And then speaking of before and after care, Amy's gonna to talk to you more about that. Thank you, Jenny. So you guys have been hearing a lot about before and after care and isn't it Main Park, is this a centennial? I'm gonna kind of go over everything for you guys. If you've been with us the past two years, we haven't been able to offer before care, but we're really excited that we're bringing back before care. So um, before care for every single camp that is available for before care, it's gonna be at Main Park and you can drop off as early as at 7 a.m. or as late as 9 a.m. Um, if your camp is located at Wildwood or the Main Park campus, a staff member will walk your camper to their campsite. If they are located um, at Prospect Park, Washington School, Centennial, uh, we'll start loading them on the buses about 20 till uh, nine to get them transported to their camp so we can get them to their campsites as close to nine o'clock as possible, um, give or take a few minutes on either side. And to know if your camp that you're looking at is available for before care, you'll just have to look for the little sun logo, which is on this slide. Aftercare does look a little different this year. It's offered from 3 to 6 p.m. and we have two different locations. We have the main park location and we have the Centennial Activity Center location. Um, most of the camps are going back to main park, but if you're signing up for sports camp, varsity camp, camp rewind, or art extravaganza, we're gonna keep you over there at the Centennial campus. Um, if you're not familiar, Washington is right next door to Centennial Activity Center and Centennial Fitness Center. Um, and they'll have their aftercare location there. And then you'll pick them up from that location. Um, it's just less transportation and it helps us um, accommodate more children in aftercare because it is such a high demand in our community. And then again, with the aftercare, if you look, you can see the moon logo and that will let you know what camps are available for aftercare. But just to recap, um, the Centennial Activity Center aftercare site is sports camp, varsity camp, camp rewind, and art extravaganza. And then we can go to the next slide. So another really great thing about our camps is we have these awesome specialty camps. They are um, full day, full week camps, or sometimes they're partial day, full week camps. Um, we have stage school, uh, stage school, which is very, very popular in the community. Um, as I mentioned before, Art Extravaganza offered by Brickton Arc Center. Um, awesome August Life Skills Camp, which was new last year and was a big hit. Uh, subway Surfing, and then new is the Subway Surfing Baseball Tour. Um, Chicago Storm Camp, and then our very popular Counselor and Training Program. Um, they're all really great, just different options to have. Then we have partial day camps where we've got our skateboarding camp. Again, we've got stage school for the younger kids, um, more different varieties of Brickton art camps. We have a half day cooking camp this year, sports specific camp. So that's like a volleyball camp, a soccer camp, a baseball camp. And then we have a mini sports camp that is a combo of a whole bunch of different sports into one camp. And then lastly, besides our aftercare option, we definitely have other ways to extend your camper's day. Um, we have a couple weeks where we have different technology classes. We're offering a Lego science camp from three to five to complement the camp day. Um, the Wildwood Nature Center offers really great creative classes at the end of the day. And then we also knew this year is we have swim lessons. And those swim lessons are gonna take place at the Centennial Fitness Center. And then you would just pick up from the swim lesson. If you do sign up for any of our extended day 
options, we will transport your child to that extended day option, and then you would pick up from that location. Um, and I think without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Debbie Mychek, who's going to walk us through all of the registration information. Thanks, Amy. Hi, all. My name is Debbie. I'm the customer service manager here at the district. I'm located at the Main Park Leisure Center I'm here at the front desk. I'm going to talk to you a few things regarding registration and some communication options. Um, the first thing is that the brochure was actually released ahead of schedule, and it's now available on our website. Um, so go ahead and take a browse through in case you haven't done that already. There's lots and lots and lots of great options that we have for this summer. Um, wait list, Julie mentioned this previously. If the camp that you're most interested in does happen to fill up quickly, please sign your camper up on the wait list. Um, camp max maxes are set by current mitigations at the time when the brochure was leased, released, and then we will be adjusting maxes as permitted. Um, but go ahead and put them on that wait list, get them signed up for a second choice. If things change, we will let you know. Um, we are offering payment plans this year again. Um, and the new exciting thing about that is it will be available through online registration um, through February 28th. Uh, starting March 1st, payment plans can only be set up in person here at Main Park. When you're choosing a payment plan option, a placeholder will be charged of either $1 per camp for residents or $5 per camp for non-residents for all eligible summer camps. Uh, payment plans for eligible summer camps can have up to four payments. Uh, being March 1st, April 1st, May 1st, and June 1st. Um, we'll be going through a live online demonstration in just a bit so you can see the difference between a camp that has a payment plan option attached to it and one that does not. Um, we do have scholarship funds available. You can grab that uh, application from our website, uh, prparks.org. You can find it under the notices and documents heading and then the forms and publications. You'll need to complete that form um, and email it in to Julie um, at the Park District. Her, her email will be in the brochure as well. Um, approved scholarships will be applied to your account and be refunded if you are awarded. Um, next thing is child care receipts. Those can actually be requested through your online household account at the end of the current year. And that can be done for any program that's child care eligible. Um, the next thing is EPAC. So this is our online secure service that we use to gather important emergency information regarding our campers. And this is also our way of helping to keep your camper safe. So it's super important that you get that information completed in a timely manner. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about uh, your household. So first you need to make sure you have a household with us. Um, if you don't, you'll need to get that established anytime uh, any time. Uh, at this point, please do it sooner rather than February 7th, because um, this way we're not be holding you up on Monday uh, come registration. The information form will need to be submitted with the required proof of residency and birth certificates for any children ages two and older. You can either see us in person to submit that, or you can do it via online to our email, which is recreation at prparks.org. The family information form can be found on our website under the heading again of notices and documents and then forms and publications. Um, it's a fillable PDF, simple, easy, fill it out, type, type in it, save it, email us, um, and we'll be happy to get that account established for you. Confirmation email will be sent if you do it via online. Um, so the next thing I'd like to talk about a little bit is um, how to check if your residency is valid or expired or active or expired. You would first need to log into your online household account. Uh, click on the My Account in the upper right hand corner. Um, under History and Balances, you would choose My History. And then from there, under the Module drop down options, you choose Past Memberships, then click Search. In the columns, you know, the options that um, get displayed look for residency verification and in the status column, see if it says active. If it says active, then you're valid or if you're expired, it'll say expired. Um, if your residency is expired, this will need to get renewed as soon as possible because it could affect your registration ability come Monday morning. Residency is valid for two years. 
Um, if expired, your resident account will be defaulted to a non-resident. And like I said, it will affect your ability to register on registration dates and or receive valid resident fees for activities. So make sure your residency is valid prior to Monday, February 7th. Uh, for further questions or assistance regarding household account information, you can contact us again either by email to recreation at prparks.org or feel free to give us a call at Main Park here, 847-692-5127. Okay, some registration information. Uh, registration does take place online on February 7th, 7.30 in the morning for online, um, 8.30 in person for residents. Um, our website, again, to do that on is prparks.org. Our brochure was released yesterday um, ahead of schedule, which is super exciting. Um, Non-resident registration will start on Friday, February 11th. In person and online will start at 8.30 in the morning. Okay. Um, with that, I'd like to, I guess, go through a live demonstration now, if that's okay with everybody. Me a moment. Okay, so when you get to our website at prparks.org, um, you're going to go up to uh, in the upper right hand corner and click the green register button. That will redirect you to our online site. As you can see, we have a new look to our online registration page. So it's super exciting. It's it's much more easier to use. We have been, you know, um, playing around with it here in the office, and it's it seems to do things much better than the previous. So here you are, you're going to have to log into your account. So I'm already here, so I'm just going to click log in. Okay, and now I'm logged in. So as you can see, we have some nice new pictures here. If you click on the camp brochure, it'll bring you to the PDF of the brochure. So right now I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go to um, show you how to do an online registration using um, this program. So if I go to activities, I can do that or I can go up to the search drop down, and I'm just gonna go do that and click right up under summer camp programs. And that will take me to all of my summer camp programs. These are in activity number order. Um, there's some spring stuff here that might have to be checked, but otherwise um, this is an activity number order. So you can search and scroll through. You can go through your options, your search options here. Sorry. Uh, or you could do through the key uh, activity number if you have that or sub court category, which is actually kind of how we have more of our camps broken down. So I'm going to register for a summer camp called, I believe it's Camp One A Lot of Fun. So I'm going to search by activity number. So it's 3201001. And then I'm just going to hit enter. And why am I not getting any options here? So here's Camp One, a lot of fun. You would click on the gray box and it brings up all of your options here. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and choose um, the first week of Camp One, a lot of fun. So I'm gonna check box that. Oh, hang on. I'm having a little difficulties here, I apologize. A checkbox, and on the bottom here behind, I don't know if you can see this pop-up box. I don't know, I'm sorry, I don't know how to get rid of it. Maybe that's how, got it. Again, my apologies. So on the bottom here, it says item selected, Camp One, a lot of fun. Um, Monday through Friday, week one, I'm going to, you can select multiple weeks at the same time and everything will add to this cart. And I'm gonna click add to cart. And it's gonna come up here and to choose your family member that's age appropriate. So I'm gonna choose Steven and then continue. So here, as you can see, there's a billing option displayed here. Um, there's a drop down here. And in this drop down, you'll have a pay in full option You'll have an option to add a checking or savings account for your monthly payments. You can use an existing credit card that you have attached to your account now, or you can add a new credit card. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and just choose the credit card I have on file. Okay, so that's loaded here, it's heading in 7879. We have to agree to the waiver, and I'm going to continue. So now this will automatically split my fee up into four equal payments right now. And like I said, there's a placeholder of $5. I'm set up as a non-resident. Um, so it's going to charge me the $5 per camp that's camp eligible. Okay, so now I'm going to continue shopping. And I'm going to load in a camp that does not have a payment plan attached to it. I'm going to go to activity number again, and I'm going to plug in my next one, 316-0405. I believe that's the right one. Nope, I think it's the wrong one. I apologize. I can't read my writing this evening. Urban Architects. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to register for, whoops, shoot, sorry, I keep hitting that wrong button. Click the box where it says add to selection and then click again, click add to cart. As you, oh no, let me find one that's my child is age appropriate for. I apologize about that. Um, okay, let's do, let me clear the selection. And I'm going to go back down to the activity number and let's try this one, 0101. Okay, youth technology. I'm going to go with gears, gears, gears. I checkbox that. It goes to my bottom to add to cart. And then as you can see, I'm going to choose Steven again because he's the only one that's age appropriate for this camp. And here I get no billing options. So it goes strictly directly to the waiver. So checkbox the waiver and continue. And then you have your shopping cart. So you, here you have the $5 for the, for the payment plan camp that you chose and then a full payment um, for gears, gears, gears. So uh, gears, gears, gears is not payment plan eligible. So from here you would proceed to checkout And then you put in your payment method, which is a credit card. Um, you'll pay the full 209 or whatever your balance is. And then you fill in all of your customer information. It could possibly pre-populate like mine is doing. Fill in your credit card inf information, click I'm not a robot, and then continue. Um, and then from there, you'll get a confirmation that your registration has been completed and you should receive an email with that receipt attached. Um, so I hope that explains everything with payment plan camps, uh, camps that are payment plan eligible and ones that are not. Give us a call here at Main Park. Again, we'd be more than happy to help you um, with any questions that you might have prior to Monday. Okay, I think. Debbie, before you wander away yes. from the online yeah. registration site, sure. could you walk through how someone could check their residency verification pass? Absolutely. Let me go back to my card. Um, let me empty this because I don't want to have to, I don't want to make any mistakes. Okay, so as I'm logged in, in the upper right hand corner, there's the my account, click on that. History and balances, you click on my history. And then from here, at least you can leave all these set under the module drop down here, you're going to choose, uh, do, 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 where is it, past memberships, and then search. And then my residency here, it says active. So that means, and here's the date range that it's active for. So um, we do send out a, an email month before, about 30 days before your, the next month expires. So there'll be a new email coming out, you know, mid-February for any residencies that expire come March. Um, so we do do that monthly for you guys. So you do get, a, get an email reminder. Um, so you can see that at any time and all the other memberships or whatever you might have with us. So that's how you check your residency. Any Thanks. other questions on that? Um, not on residency, but okay. we have a question about putting a camp in our card in advance. And then I have another one about somebody having trouble adding the Lego camp to their wish list. 
So can you show how you could start a wish list and maybe try that with the Lego camp? Yeah, let me get to that Lego camp um, information. Lego and science camp. Um, so I'm just going to search by my activity code, which is 3200413. It's not populating. 3200413. Let me just check to make sure that it's on web display. I have to do that through my other computer here. Ah, it's inactive. Okay, let me refresh that and let me refresh my search, so scroll down, click reset. I'm just going to go right directly to the activity number, and which should come up now. Three two zero zero four one three. There's our Lego, and I'm sorry they wanted to put this in their wish list. Yeah, can you show how we create a wish list so that sure. you can have those items in your cart later? Yep. So when For registration sure. opens, you could go right to your wish list and, and move everything over. Cart. Yep, so along the right side, there are these three little dots um, on each line item. So if you click on the three dots, there's two options, which is add to wait list or share. Click, simply add, click to wait list. And you see that changed from add to remove from wait list. And if you go up to my account, you go to your wish list, and it'll have your wish list um, listed there, what you have. And then simply add to cart. From there, add your child, whatever you know, family member that's age appropriate, continue. And again, no payment plan is uh, eligible for this one. So you just have the waiver, agree, and continue. So that's the quick steps for from wish list to shopping cart. Thank you. Okay. Any sure. Anything else? I think we're good with the registration. Perfect. Thank you, Debbie. You're very welcome. Um, I just wanted to go through a few of the questions um, in our questions here. Um, there was a bunch that came up about swimming. Um, just wanted to let you know that we do swim test all of the campers. I shouldn't say we do. The lifeguard swim test all the campers the first trip to the pool. Um, when they're at the pool, they will receive a wristband um, based on their swimming levels. Red would be waiting pool only, yellow shallow end, and green would mean they could go to all areas. Um, the camp staff are spread out throughout the pools. Um, the campers are not required to be able to swim, but they would receive a red wristband or sometimes if they're tall enough, um, the shallow pool. So hopefully that answers some of the um, swimming questions. Um, let me run through some of more that. Molly, can you pop back on and talk again about um, the changing with the swimsuits for the early childhood age group? Um, we've gotten um, quite a few questions about that as well. Yeah. So we have a couple of rooms available. For changing, we will take the girls into one room after they're ready to change or done playing in the water play area if they chose to get very wet. And the boys will go into a separate area. There are bathrooms in those rooms. The kids gather all of their things and they go into the rooms. Um, male counselors stay with the boys and female counselors stay with the girls. Um, you will, um, except for the early childhood age groups, you will register your your child up for the age they will be by September 1st. That way we try to keep all the um, ages and grades together. So 
Sorry, we're just, just going through all these questions. I don't, I'm trying to. Ooh, what are the most popular camps that we want to sign up for, for first? That is an excellent question. Um, does anyone, maybe Debbie, um, I feel like nature camp fills up pretty quickly um, because of the limited space um, for those camps. Yeah, nature camp fills up very quickly. Um, so if that's your first option, if you can't get on, please, again, add to that wait list. Um, sports camp is usually not far behind. Um, Discovery Crew is a very popular camp. Um, you know, it just, you know, it just depends what your kids like. Um, Quest is a good one. That one seems to fill up rather quickly too. Um, but in my experience here in, in nature camp usually is the first one waitlisted, usually the first day of, res of registra registration. So just keep that in mind when you're, you know, kind of picking things out for the kids. Um, we got a question about refunds. Um, yes, you can receive a refund for camp. So yes, if you want to register for camp and your schedule changes, um, sorry, I just want to make sure I have it at, uh, five days prior to the first day of camp, uh, you'll get a full refund minus a $3 admin fee. After the start of the camp, we will only um, do prorated refunds based on medical or changes in residency. If your child does miss um, camp because they have COVID or have to quarantine because of COVID, we will refund those days as well. Another quick question, Julie. Mm -hmm. If you ended up signing up for your second choice camp because your first choice had, um, wasn't available, but then your first choice ended up expanding and having room, can you change your registration to the first choice without penalty? Yes, yes. Um, and I will, um, the other thing I wanted to mention about changing camps is we have a lot of phenomenal options. Um, and our camps, as you can tell from Debbie's list, our camps do fill up. Um, so we do have parents that like to switch week after week to different camps. And then sometimes the child ends up having a connection with, um, with one of the counselors, they're having a great time, or they really like the other campers that are in the camp. But you know, let's say they're signed up for Nature Camp and then they switch to Camp Rewind, but now they, you know, and then it, um, they wanna go back to Nature Camp, but it's full. So just um, be careful, because we can't always accommodate those changes if the camp is full. So um, just know that that does occur and um, we do want the kids to have a good time and we like them to be you know, where they're happiest, um, but sometimes we just can't make those accommodations. Julie, is the $3 administrative fee per camp or is it for each week, each session? I think I'm gonna have Debbie answer that question. Sorry, Debbie. <laughs> That's okay, no, it's all good. Um, so with the $3 admin fee, um, if you're withdrawing, it is it is per camp per child. Um, however, if you're pulling out, for example, from a week of before care, after care, and the camp, we will not charge the admin fee for the before and after options, just the camp itself. Um, if it's pulling out just a before and after care and staying in the camp, then we will probably, we, we normally will only service fee or admin fee one of the two options. Um, so it's just, you know, depends on how the combination is. But we want to be as fair as possible as well, because I know that can add up to be quite a bit if you're pulling out multiple weeks, multiple camps, multiple kids, you know, so we, we try to keep that in mind as we process the withdrawal requests. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Jim, the next one's going to you. You want to pop on? It's fun to see everyone without their masks on. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Jim, especially sports camp like volleyball, are um, they designed for campers to go for one week or is it better to attend all the weeks? Is the content repeated from week to week? Um, content is pretty much the same format week to week, so it's a one week camp. 
And then, um, so the format's the same, but if they, they would be able to maybe build skill depending on, um, I guess I'm thinking of what my child in volleyball, she's been able to build on her skills maybe. Well, the more they do it, the better they get, but uh, they'll pretty much go over the same things on the same days. On a, It's the same camp repeated 11 weeks over. Um, this, uh, there's a question on being able to combine two early childhood camps, Camp Curiosity and Wild Child. I'm not sure that we would be able to make that um, accommodation because one goes till 1.30 and one starts at noon. Jenny or Molly, um, is that the correct answer? Yeah, I think you're correct. One goes till 1.30, the other one starts at 12.30. So um, I'm not sure that we can combine those two camps. I agree. It'd be, it would be hard to line that up just because you'd be pulling kids out of activities and just kind of disrupting their day. And for like our wild childs, if you know they're not always on their campsite location, they're hiking around the ground, so we'd be finding them as well. Um. Well, Jenny, you can stay on. Oh, she left. <laughs> All right, Jim or, or Jim or Jenny, um, do you guys want to give some examples of field trip locations? I know we haven't done field trips in a couple of years, so they might be a little different than in the past, but um, I know we've kind of started the process, but we don't have anything scheduled yet. Yeah, this year we are slated and we're uh, reaching out and booking those now, um, but our Plans would be to go to um, Lyman Woods for their beekeeping program. So um, we wear beekeeper suits and learn all about beekeeping and the importance of bees and hike. Um, they're part of the um, oh, what, Downers Grove Park District. They're on a big um, forest preserve land over there. So we hike over there. Um, our hope is to also, um, one of our themes is um, kind of the rocks. So there's two cool rock features in our area. One is at Red Oaks, they've got a cave, and so we're hoping to go back there. And the other one is uh, Sagawa Environmental Learning Center. They have a canyon, the only canyon in Cook County. However, um, when I reached out to them, they are repairing their canyon stairs. Oh. Uh, so you can't get into the canyon right now. Um, so we are hoping that um, they fix their stairs so that we can go back there. Uh, we also go canoeing. Um, so we're reaching out to them to book our canoe trip to the Skokie Lagoons. And um, rock climbing indoors at Vertical Endeavors in Glendale Heights. Uh, sports camps, field trips. Um, we do anything from bowling. We do go to like entertainment centers that have arcades, uh, go-kart kind of things. Um, and uh, we go swimming at different aquatic centers. Um, we've done uh, the indoor sports at the Schomburg uh, big sports plex that has stuff like indoor soccer and things like that. Um, so basically try to have it sports themed, but also a lot of fun. So, um, and we'll probably go to a lot of things we've done in the past because we do have some popular ones that repeat throughout the summer. Julie, you're muted. Oh, I had a dollar every time I've heard that in the last two years. Um, is it better to group similar camps week after week or alternate them? So multiple weeks of nature camp and then multiple weeks of camp rewind. Um, what is the norm? I'm not sure there is a norm. Um, I know there are some kids that just do all 10 weeks of one camp. Um, I know that I think it's more of a parent choice of what or Sometimes it's based on where their friends are signed up for. Um, I don't know if there's um, a good answer of this would work best. Dunning, do you have a, anything to add? No, I think it, you're right. It comes down to their preference. Sometimes it comes down to where their best friend is going. Um, it might be easier them to, for them to find their group if you kind of did it in chunks. Um, but again, you know, maybe you have a really adaptable child. Maybe your child is a little hesitant about new things. So it just kind of depends 
on the family and friends and I like chunks just because I think getting to know the same group of counselors like in our camp, which is pretty big, uh, you know, we got probably uh, 15 staff, maybe 20. And uh, so if they one week's not enough time to really get to know staff. So maybe two or three week chunks and then go to a different camp for two or three weeks or four or stay all 10. Thanks, Jenny. Um, a question about medical conditions, if we can accommodate them. Um, I, you know, we, I would need to know some more information, um, but yes, we do have had um, medical conditions that we are able to accommodate. Um, we've got the EpiPens and the inhalers. Um, sometimes um, there's other conditions where we work with the Maine Niles Association of Special Recreation to provide um, an in inclusion companion to work with the camper. Um, so if you want to work, um, you know, if you want to talk or email me and let me know specifically what um, condition, I would be more than happy to walk through that with you. Um, all right, Jim, sorry, I should have gone back to you first. Um, types of sports equipment for All-Star Mini Sports Camp. Is there anything that is required for them to bring? Um, they may ask you at the class on the certain day that they may play t-ball to bring your own mitt, but other than that, all equipment is provided. Thank you. Um, and then, um, sorry, the screen just moved. Um, okay, so um, our camp weeks, uh, we do not plan them to repeat activities. So you could attend all 10 weeks of nature camp or 10 weeks of Camp Rewind. Um, you would repeat games and activities, but not um, special events. The only, the only camp that um, would overlap is um, Discovery Crew. If you register for Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Tuesday, Thursday, the Monday, Wednesday, Friday kids, um, the Monday, Wednesday, Friday activities repeat on Tuesday, Thursday. Uh, the campers swim about an hour to an hour and a half, two to three times a week. Again, that depends on weather. So there's some weeks that we can't swim at all and other weeks that we can get all three days of swimming in. Okay, Margaret, do you see any questions that we have missed? I love all these questions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Swim lessons can, or swim testing came up a few times. Did you go over that again? Um, I can, camp. sure. Yeah. Um, so the lifeguards swim test all the campers the first trip to the pool and they assign them a wristband. Um, red is for the waiting pool, they can't swim at all. Um, yellow would be for the shallow area and green would be they would be available um, to go to any area of the pool. And then we just took out a new question. What do they do on a rainy day when it was scheduled as a swim day? Well, we don't go swimming. Um, so we will do indoor activities. So the camps try to do um, creative things to keep the camps having fun. One of my favorites is when they do the, um, I don't know the name of it, but um, it's airplane mini golf i guess and so there's like targets throughout the halls of main park and the kids make airplanes and they have to like get their airplane to the target it's, i don't know why it's one of my favorite and um the other one they put string all up and down one area of the hall and they had to kind of like spider-man through the maze um the campers love that we've set up badminton nets in the hall um we also rotate through the gym um, the camps rotate through the gym, so they still have some active play. So um, the camp staff do what they're best at, and they are creative. Um, there are times where every once in a while they do watch a movie. We try um, to limit that because, you know what, they can watch a movie at home. So um, we do not really want them to do that, um, but every once in a while, um, everyone just kind of needs a break and to sit and relax. But I think we got all the questions. All right. All right. Well, if everyone wants to pop back on, we will say goodbye. And I would like to thank everyone for attending tonight and thinking of the warm summer with us. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to any of us. Um, 
we'd all be um, able to help and uh, get you the right answer. So thank you very much. Have a great night.